Hey, hey, welcome to the loading screen. Today I'm going to do a starting tutorial for Farthest Frontier. It's not going to be an exhaustive guide, but it'll get you ready to play and feeling a bit confident in those early stages. So first of all, let's look at the new settlement screen. We have three different types of difficulty, Pioneer being the easiest, Trail Bellies are around the middle, and Vanquisher the hardest. Then underneath, that's where you title the name of your town. You can roll for different ones if you don't feel like making up your own terrain. So this is where the different map biomes are. And they come with different difficulties too. So Arid Highlands is probably the, the hardest, whereas Lowland Lakes is going to be the easiest. And Alpine Valleys and Plains, you know, sort of in the middle. And you can go random if you just want to give anything a go. Now going back, we've also got map size. The small, medium and large map size pacifist mode is an interesting one. That's if you just want to chill out and play without having to think about raiders or armies coming in or predators killing people. Now, advanced settings is cool. This is where you can load in map seeds. You can roll them or you can put in specific ones. And here, this is what I really love. You can mix and match different uh, difficulties. So you can say you want extra resources so you can start on pioneer but you want to have really hard time dealing with diseases because that's just the way you want to go <laughs> but you don't you don't want too many raiders but you don't mind having them around and wildlife or say you want to be killing those wolves and hunting lots of deer put that on pioneer and then you click start to to go into it or you can go back to basic settings and it brings you back to this menu so let's move on. When you first load your game, it's going to come up with this tile screen, this loading screen. It gives you a little story before you start. If you want to skip that, you just hit the escape button or you can sit back and listen to the story. By the way, the voice actor for this is someone you know. I'll give you a guess. He often dies in all the, in all the roles that he plays. Poor fella. And here we are at the loading screen. But I won't make you wait for this. So when the game finally get, loads up, it comes to this section here. You can't click on anything or move around until you hit confirm. Before we go any further, I just wanted to bring your attention to the hotkey cheat sheet up in the top right hand corner there. That's always going to be there. So if you forget how to do certain things, you can always just look up there and use it to guide you to what you need to do. All right, now's the time to start looking at your map. You can't pause during this, this time, and so it's okay to take time and look around. Obviously, the most important thing is moving around the map. It's WASD, moves you around like this. You can also drag your mouse to the edges for edge scrolling. You can also click and hold your right mouse button and sort of drag it around and you can sort of smoothly move it. When I recorded this tutorial, I totally forgot about the rotate camera one. So all you have to do is hold in your mouse wheel and drag left to right to rotate the camera. Now, of course, if you don't have a middle mouse wheel for whatever reason, you can always go into the hotkeys menu settings controls and then you can change them here. You can also push and pull that mouse wheel to zoom in and out. That's another handy one to know. Okay back to it. Hit the letter F to bring up the fertility of the land. The darker green means the more fertile and the lower end like around here that shows you that it's less fertile. Another uh, important one when you get sort of further down the track when you start building is the you hit the letter G to bring up desirability of the houses and that comes into play when you start building houses and where people might want to live. You click the letter again to deselect it. The other one is I and that brings you to water so you can see how much water you got around where is a good idea to put your wells. Now what do you look for when you start a map? Obviously Fertility, as I've already shown, there's good fertile land through here and up along here. That's good for planting uh, your crops. So that's where you put your farms. 
You also want to look at how many trees are around and these rock clusters because you're going to need rock and trees. <laughs> All right. And now we're going to go through quickly the different little icons. These here are rock clusters. Now, the bigger the cluster, the more rocks you can harvest from it. And here we have sand. Sand pit. This is what coal looks like. Here is gold ore. And here is iron ore next to coal. <laughs> Mixed in a little bit there. Here you can see some clay. You can also see bird's nest, the little egg icon. Two different bird's nests here. One has two green up arrows and the other has three green up arrows. So what does that mean? The number of arrows indicates how much of that resource is there. So no arrows means there's some there. One, there's more. Two, there's even more. And three is the most. As you collect more of that resource, those green arrows do go down. So for example, if it's deer, there's a lot of deer around at three, but as you hunt those deer, then it'll go down to two arrows, then one. And the way to replenish it is to obviously not hunt those deers or not collect those eggs for a season. It may not matter much for eggs, but when you start seeing those on things like iron and coal and clay and gold, the difference between three arrows up and no arrows is huge in the amount of resource that you can collect. Here are greens. They're collected by foragers. Here are deer. Let's zoom in. Have a little look at them. Oh, there you go. Hunters are the ones that can go and collect those. You can also see next to this bird's nest is nuts. Here we can see one for ball. We'll zoom in so you can have a little look at the ball. Hey little ball. Okay. Here you can see willow. It's used to create baskets and something else can't think of off the top of my head. And also see here, patch of herbs. Berries. So you can harvest them through the forager or you can set your laborers to harvest them. Here you can see medicinal roots. Here you can see a fishing spot. There's a little animation there, a fish jumping out of the water. You don't need these fishing spots to collect fish along the edge of water, but I think that there's more there in that section if you have that spot. Could be wrong. If you know, mention in the comments for me. <laughs> Here we have mushrooms. Now, I've just spotted in this one three wolf dens. Wolf are really hard to deal with when you're first starting off. Let's zoom in to have a look at them. There they are. Now, when you first start this game, there's a couple of ways you can go about dealing with wolves. First one is to build nowhere near them. <laughs> uh, the other one is that what you can do is build a defense tower in your town and then move that building closer to where the wolves are. I'll be showing you how to do that later on, how to move buildings. Or what you can also do is set your hunters to hunt in this area and they'll take out those wolves. Now, as you hunt those wolves successfully, their numbers will dwindle. The red around the icon will go to gray and they will temporarily all be killed off, but it will eventually replenish so they will come back. So what a warning there. Don't let your guard down. Once you've found a spot that you're happy with to plonk down that town center. You just left click and then you hit yes. Then we go black screen. <laughs> and then this is where our villagers get to building the town center. First of all, I just wanna start with if you hit the space bar, that pauses your game. And numbers one to four control the speed of your game. So let's zoom in so you can see it in action. Get between these trees. Okay. 
One is half speed, so they're going pretty slowly. Two is one time speed. Three is two times speed. And four is three times speed, just to be a little bit confusing there. First of all, I wanna go through these hotkeys down the bottom here. The first one is Z, and that centers the camera on the village. So say you are out off somewhere else, exploring, you hit Z, bam, straight back to the center of your town. It's really helpful when, as you progress through the game and your town expands outwards. The next one is P for professions. This is an important one. First of all, it shows you your laborers. They're the ones that cut stuff around the town and they'll chop down trees if you tell them to, harvest berries and those sort of things. Your builders are obviously the builders. They're the ones that construct the buildings in your town. From this menu here, you can control how many people you have on what roles as you build buildings. For example, once you build a mine, say a coal mine, it'll pop up here and you can just add or subtract. The other thing about this one is that when somebody gets sick and they're out of work, they can't work for, because they're either sick or they've fractured a bone or whatever, you can come to here and it'll show you where they were working because it'll come up with a negative number in red. And then you can add somebody else in to cover for them. Hit on the X to close it. The next one I want to bring up is R for resources. Now you'll notice here that we were just in professions over here. So you can actually access other things within this little menu here. But hitting P brings you up professions and R brings you up resources. The resources show exactly what you have in your inventory. At the moment, we have some food and some tools and swords and arrows and bows. Now these little tick boxes here, you can split them into categories, which is handy for a quick overview of things. So you're not like having to scroll through because you can get heaps and heaps of stuff in your inventory. You can also show what you don't have in your inventory. So that's also helpful as well. Oh, hang on, let's just check that back on the categories. So you can go, oh look, you know, firewood or I'm out of gold ingots or oh, I need more flour, blah, blah. Inline categories. So instead of having those categories split up into separate parts, you can just have it in line. So it follows through like that, if you prefer. And then you can have it so that all the empty items appear last in this inline or in the categories or however wish you want to do it. Down the bottom here, it shows you how much are in your storehouses and stockyards and, and storage. So you can have a quick overview of if you need to build more of these buildings. And this, the rest of it pretty much speaks for itself, showing how much food spoilage there is, clothing, equipment, and stocked shelters. Now sticking with this menu, let's go to the town info tab. This gives you a quick overview of town and the all important garrison villages when your place gets raided. So unless you're in pacifist mode, this is gonna come in handy. When somebody tries to raid your town, you gotta to click that and all the villagers know to run into the town center. It also gives you information. So the basic needs of the people at the moment, they've all got clothing and shoes and hide coats. But like, as you go through the game, this is going to change. Obviously you'll either have, you know, lots of coats that fills all the needs or suddenly you've got nothing. Like when I first started doing this, I forgot to build a cobbler and suddenly nobody had shoes and nobody was happy about it. I wonder why. <laughs> Um, traveling, this shows you how much time it takes to travel between places. Over here is your needs. So at the moment, because I haven't built any houses, they obviously, one of their top needs is shelter. They really want somewhere to live and cleanliness. They've got no soap. <laughs> they want soap to stop diseases and things like that. <laughs> so, and here it says the current level of the town center is one. I think at the moment you can only build your town center up to level three. And then once, okay, we'll wait till it's built and then I'll show you what you do to upgrade it. Something else I want to show you is this guy here that's hiding behind the trees. <laughs> it's your storage cart. Everybody starts off with one. Now I'm just going to move it out to somewhere where you can actually see it. And to do that, you click on move building and it goes over there. Now this only seems to come up for things like carts. So well, put it over there and let's roll it on over. 
Oh, look, it's raining. How a massive. So here's a nice close-up view of the storage cart that everybody starts off with. Here you can see them building the town centre in the different stages. It's pretty cool. I like it. All right. Now, if you notice on the people, they have these little icons above their head, which also, instead of, you know, having to go into that window to look at the happiness, you can also just look at the icons that are above the villagers' heads. So this villager is unhappy. And they want homes. They're homeless. They're unhappy. They want soap. They want water. They want it all. They'll probably need some food soon too. Okay, so let's get back to the menu down the bottom. So you hit the letter B or you click on the building menu here. And that brings up all the different types of buildings that you can build. And they're put into subcategories. Amenities and services. That's where you find your town center, but you've already built that. The all important market and the graveyard. Graveyard's always important to put down first because if somebody dies, their decaying body can create disease and you don't want that. Market is very important too. The market is where all your villagers get their gear and it produces revenue and gold. So if we look at the market here, it shows what you require to build it. So it says that you need a saw pit and a storehouse. And it also tells you which subcategory to go to to find that building. You need 60 work points, and 30 planks and 10 rocks. Housing. At the moment there's only, you can only start with these shelters and eventually you'll get a temporary shelter. That's not the same as a shelter. The temporary shelters are used if you have to travel out far for somebody to go mine something. You can put a temporary shelter out there so that they can stay in that shelter while they mine or cut trees or whatever. Next one down is your storage. Stockyard's your first one. And then you eventually get a storehouse that stores all items outside of the stockyard. And then you also want to put down root cellars because they help stop, they're used for food and they help stop spoilage. A number of these buildings can be upgraded through the game. And then you can also get a preview of what's in tier two. The wagon shop you'll need, and the granary, the cooper, build those all important barrels and your vault for when you get lots and lots of money. Food production, hunter cabin, forager shack, fishing shack, crop field, and smoke house. You wanna build your crop fields where the ground is fertile, so just remember to hit that F, brings up the fertility of the land, and then you decide where to put your farms. So I'd put one down here. Fishing shack, obviously, wherever your water is. My water's over here. Forager shack. So the foragers are the ones that go collect the eggs and the herbs and all those sort of things. And the hunter cabin are the ones, ones that can go out and get deer. And they can also kill wolves and boar as well. And now you go into resources. So the first things that you start off with is a basic well. Now all towns, all house shelters, you need to have a well. So it's important to get that one down early in game. Also the firewood splitter, that's very important. That's what they use through the winter to keep the houses warm so that people don't freeze. Saw pit, they cut those logs into planks and those planks, you're gonna need a lot of those through this game. The tannery produces your high coats. So they use the, the pelts that come from the hunters. Pelts also come from the barns where you have cows, but that's later on. We just wanna look at what's to start off with. Cobbler shop, important for those shoes. Fletcher building, so you need to build a Fletcher pretty early on so that you can stock your hunters with the necessary bows. Basket shop, that's important so that each villager can carry more about the, when they go about their day. And the compost yard. Now the compost yard, I just wanna note here that you should be putting it kind of close to where your houses are, but away from the houses because it does affect something called desirability. And if you've got a compost yard near those houses, oh, they're not gonna like that stink. <laughs> so they go, basically, they go around and collect everybody's poo and they turn it into compost, which you can then put it onto your farm fields to increase the fertility of those farms. I won't go through all the other ones because this is just a starter one. If we go down to defenses, unless you're in pacifist mode, it's important to put some lookout towers around because raiders do start coming and they, they start off in low numbers and they progress up into armies. And the lookout tower is where you can post somebody to stand and shoot them down when they 
get it close. I always put, when I start, I put a lookout tower near the trade center because usually that's where gold gets put and that's where they'll go to get that gold. Next one is walls and roads. So basic fences, sort of basic uh, stone walls, fence gates, and roads. Now these fences, they're good to put around farms to stop deer coming in and eating your crops. And it also stops raiders coming through, but they're, I, I don't think that they're very high in durability. And then it also, you know, goes on to more, ex, uh, more walls and doors and stone roads. Now I want to talk about the dirt road now. So the dirt road lets your villagers travel faster. They're important especially in the areas that you want to go to. So you can also use the hotkey N to bring up the road tool. Or you can hit N again to get rid of it. You can also right click to deselect the roads as well. So let's say we want to put a road in along here. You click once and then you don't have to drag it. Just, just move your mouse across and it creates your road. And then you left click again to put it down in place. So you can also from there change the direction of the road like this. When it goes red, you can't put the road down. It's not going to let you do it there. So let's just do that there. Right click to unselect it and then you can right click again, takes it away from that menu. So the next one I want to look at is H for harvest resources. When you do this harvest resources, the laborers will go out and collect what you've selected. So here you can already see this white around the tree, that means that somebody's already going to take that down. And that's because I put the road through it. But if you want to collect other things, down here you can deselect what you want to collect or select specific things. So say I want, I only want to harvest, get my guys to harvest trees and I want them to take all these tree downs. So to do it, you left click and you drag to create that box. And then you release the left click and it selects all the trees in that area. Now you can also select multiple things at a time. So, you know, trees and rocks and so forth. This is also good when you're running out of food and you need to get more resources. You can't collect things like greens using laborers or the willow bushes, but they will collect berries. So whoop, there you go. So someone will go, go out to collect those berries. And as I said before, when it's grayed out like this, it means that it's not in season. But when it comes into season, someone will go out and collect those. Let's get on to the next thing, clear. So say I wanted to clear the roads that I put down. So I want to get rid of these ones. I just highlight them like that. Now, as you can see, it's highlighted the whole entire thing. That's because I did this in one go, where I left clicked here, pulled it over to here, left clicked, and then went down to there. So unfortunately it's gonna get rid of the whole thing, but that's okay. If you wanna do that, you do, you highlight it like that and you just hit clear and it gets rid of that road. Manage walls, I wouldn't worry about that just yet as you're starting off in the game, that's for another tutorial. Flattened terrain can be very important, especially when you're on something like Alpine and Valley, you need flat spaces to build buildings. So as you can see here, this is a bit of a hill and if we tried to put a house on it, it's not going to let me because it says slope too steep. Doesn't like it. Actually, while we've got this thing up here, you can also see that if you hit the tab button, it moves it around. Yay. And then it also tells you what the location desirability is. And it's obviously zero because there's nothing else around except for a town center. But that will change if you've got markets up and healers and pubs and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so say we wanted to put this house here, but we can't because the land is too sloped. We hit the letter T, you click and drag the area that you want to flatten. There's iron ore here, wouldn't really put a house here, but <laughs> let's say instead we would want to put a mine there and it won't let us because it won't say, so, we'll do that bit too. Tells us how much uh, working points it's going to take. I think that's cool. I, I just call it working points because, you know, I can't think of anything else. It's probably got an actual designated name for it, but who knows. So let's take it off pause. I'll quickly jump into professions and I'll just check a couple more people into building. Can we watch them do their thing? Down it goes. Oh, there we go. That's flattened. This one's taking a little bit long because it's a bit of a bigger area. There we go. The land is nice and flat. Okay. Now that it's flat, let's put a shelter down. 
Oh, look. Oh, no, it's still a bit. Still not flat enough. But you can put it here. You can try, you can go and re flatten that terrain as well. So let's just do that. Get them to it. Now we have nice flat land. And we can put a house down. So let's say we want to put it here. And then you scroll out and go, oh, no, it's too close to the iron ore. They're not going to want to be near a mine. So that's okay. You just click on it. And then you hit this button here. So that's going to make them not build the, the property there. Actually, while we have this window open, you can also designate how many people are assigned to building this. And that becomes important when you when you really need to build something that's a priority. You can also hit prioritized and you get this little exclamation mark here so that they know that they need to build this first. And sometimes when you wanna build a whole lot of stuff, you can place it down and then take untick this and they won't build it until you're ready for it to be built. And I sometimes I do this if I just wanna get a layout down or I'm deciding to make a new like residential area and I wanna place all the housing spots down, but I don't wanna build them straight away. And I'll put those down. Let's say we wanna move it. So we just hit X. Yeah, yes, we wanna delete it and reclaim its resources. So you reclaim the resources that people have already put through to it. So let's find another spot to put down a house. And I'll show you another nifty thing to know early on in the game. Let's say I've decided that I'm gonna make this area residential area. And it's important to have sort of zones when you're building. You're gonna need three zones, residential, and within that residential, you'll have things like a market and healer and school. Then you'll want sort of like the more industrial areas. I usually put them around where there's already resources, like this one over here is coal and sand. So I might make this like an industrial area. And then you also need your farming area. Now the farming area, you want to put down on the darker green because the more fertile the land, the better the number of crops that you'll get growing. So let's just say we want to put our residential area up here. Let's put a house down, play. Build a road out to it from the town center. Yeah, they've already building up, build, build, build. Okay, let's pause this again. Now say we're like, oh, you know, now that it's built, I don't know if that's where I wanted to put it. That is fine. You can always go up to the menu and this is relocate building location. This comes in handy, especially for like watchtowers and stuff where you can build them inside your town and then relocate them out uh, to an area, say that's near wolf dens and stuff like that. It's a lot better to build it in a safe area and then export it out. So let's relocate this building. Hit tab to move them around. <laughs> Land is a bit dodgy here. And let's just say I wanna put it here instead. So I click that there. And that tells us here. And while they're taking it down, you can see here, like with the villages, these little icons pop up to show you what's going on with this house. So this house has no firewood. That's obviously a problem. You usually get things like no firewood, no food, no water. Another thing I wanna to bring to your attention is up in the top left corner here. So this is when notifications come through. So it's telling me I've got a housing shortage and the firewood is low at the moment. So you click on that one up here and it brings up a little thing and what you can do, why it's a problem and usually like what you can do to fix that problem. You also click on here, gives you the, the same sort of information and you click on them again to take it down. Also, while we're at it up here, it gives you information on your villages. So at the moment, I've only got enough housing for four people and there's 12. So it's come up in red and it's given me this little exclamation mark to say that there's an issue. This one here, that shows you when villagers are sick or they're in bed and they're stuck and they can't work. This one here is once you've been playing for a while, it gives you a report of everything. How much has been eaten, how much has been produced. So you can sort of see if you're overproducing things or underproducing what you can sell off the trade center. This gives you some great information about your population, growth of the town, the births, immigrations, all the rest, a few stats. 
for the math nerds of us out there. Births and immigrations are linked to the happiness of the town. Moving along this top one, this is your happiness. You can just hover over it and it brings up that menu so you can get a quick snapshot of what's going on in your town, what people are happy about and what they're not. That little cradle there that shows you the birth rate and if people are working or they're idling while they're working or trying because they can't work because they're missing an ingredient or something. Here is your food stores. It tells you how many months of food that you've got stored. So you've got an idea that, you know, how long will your villages last? Especially that becomes important through winter. It also shows you your spoilage. So if you haven't built your st uh, the proper storage facilities or you haven't upgraded them and food is spoiling, this will tell you how long you have. This is your temperature and other weather conditions. So at the moment, there's a, it's warm temperature and a light breeze because we're pretty much so springs are out here and then you've got summer, autumn winter pretty self-explanatory and if you hover over it it tells you what year you're playing in and those weather conditions as well up the top here you've got some of your main storage materials how many logs you have logs you'll find you'll need all the time it, it's quite incredible and you if you're not careful with planning then your resources can run out and you may need to use the trader to buy and sell firewood very important especially during winter planks that are for buildings and things like that. You've got your stone, your clay, the number of bricks you make, and your gold, monthly gold. I have nothing coming at the moment. Gold comes in through pubs and marketplaces and things like that, or if you're creating gold ingots. Automatic building upgrades. Now that we've started, we can see here that someone is sick of dehydration. That's because we haven't built a well. So it's really important to get those wells up really fast. If you come up the top here, it'll tell you what they've got and then it'll give you a clue as to what you can do to fix the problem. I've just put up the window for this shelter here. And as you can tell, it gives you a lot of information about this house. It tells you what sort of house it is, what it's good for, and then it says something, upgrade requirements. So as you go along in the game, buildings can be upgraded. And that's when this automatic building upgrade is enabled. Once you hit all these requirements, it'll just start upgrading it automatically. You can turn that off in case you don't want to do that just yet, or you're saving up your planks for something else or or resources for something else. To upgrade this house to the next level, you need a town center of tier two. You need at least one basic well somewhere in the town location desirability bonus now this ties into what i was saying about like with that compost building houses and people don't want to live near mines and places where their poo is stored jeez i wonder why Ugh. <laughs> and so you need to get that up to 30 percent for it to upgrade they need two different types of food and they need some herbs and it's going to cost six wood planks to do it and then once you get up to that next tier you get a bonus to the the desirability of that house and you also get increased durability because your buildings will degrade over time especially if there's storms and lots of wind they will degrade and you'll need builders to fix them and that takes up planks and here you also can see who's living in there what their occupation is what they're doing are they sick are they happy all that sort of stuff so this is the storage within the house and then you've got your basic needs down here so they've got plenty of clothing shoes and coats they'd like some medicine there's none at the moment they need some firewood need some more water and they need food. Also in this, you also have targeting the work radius. So that's when you have say like a work camp or a forager or a hunter, you can set it. So let's build one of those buildings to show you what that all looks like. Because this building isn't on wheels, you can't move it that way. But like I said, you can relocate that building from up there. I wanted to show you this desirability too and what can affect it. I've got a firewood splitter here. And as I bring it closer to the house, see that how that number goes down to, into the negative you don't, they don't want to be living near this firewood splitter. So that's why the zoning is important when you start building your first town. You want to know that these sort of buildings need to go into a separate area because people won't want to live in that house. And if it gets low enough, they will actually leave your town. And then you're left without workers and that's not fun. So I've put one down here. Let's build it up. The forager shack doesn't affect the desirability of these houses. You can put them anywhere. Can you see that yellow line? So that's showing you their work area. Now that's what the thing that you can actually change. So let's just put it here for the time being. When you're starting off in the game, it's a good idea to have your storage cart somewhere where you're doing all the building so that the people don't need to move as far to get their resources. So now we have our firewood splitter going. 
the firewood splitter, you can see who is working there. At the moment, we've only got one person assigned. They assign automatically after the building has been built. Here, you can decide if you want zero or two. Some buildings, you can click on these and assign exactly who you want to be there that becomes important when your villagers start to get educated similar to the house you've got your storage and you also got how many items they produced in the previous year you've got overall produced items what's required to produce those items and then the work rate at the moment it's sitting at 100 percent down here it's got a bit of a breakdown the important things to look out for, I think, is this idle because when this is all the way up the top, you know that something's going wrong. They're not getting the resources they need to make their items. This tells you the travel time they have to go between their business and this and the supply time. And that can affect, you know, how quick they're going to do it. Basic needs, they're working, how much time are they spending working? Now this has just popped up. More people wish to join your settlement. This is a good thing. You need more people. Because the more people you have, the more things you can do and the further you can progress in the game. You just got to keep in mind that here they're saying that you they, they'll they join your settlement if you can make four months supply of food and six houses for them to live. And if you do that, they will join your settlement. So let's click OK. Now we have built a forager shack. Now these guys are very useful because they're the ones that go out and get your herbs and, and get some food early on when you haven't actually got any farms established. They will be the ones that collect these eggs. They can collect berries and nuts. Change where this yellow circle is, their work area. You go up to here and retarget building area. So say I wanted to, to target this up here. Or there's lots of berries and stuff down in this area so I can go, yep, I want to build there. I want them, sorry. I want them to go forage in this area. You can only have one person working in this and at this current time in the game, there's no upgrades to this building yet. These are the items that they can go and fetch and it's got all your other standard stuff as well, travel and the, and the breakdown of what they're doing. And something I haven't touched on yet is the exploration point. See how on the map out from the center of your town, you've got this black line. So that's everything on the other side of this in this black area is places that you haven't explored yet. So to explore them, you can either click down here or hit the letter E and then you just left click to plonk down some spots. If you want to remove that, then you just left click on it, brings up this menu here. You can remove flag or you can even move it to a different spot. And then eventually a villager will go out and explore that area. So let's see that. Just waiting for somebody to decide to do it for me. They must all be busy. Oh, look, here we go. Someone's going out and they're spotting all sorts of stuff. Looks like a good farming area. So I'll go to that spot and then they'll continue to the next flag spot. Sometimes you got to be like, you have to understand that they will come across things like wolf dens and boars, so they can get attacked. Sometimes and occasionally a bear. Decorations. Our decorations help the desirability of your town. The trees, they all require gold. So this is something that you'll come across later on when you start getting money in and going out through taxes and through the trading post. You can grow trees here. I do believe that they don't give as much wood as the normal growing trees and they don't spawn new trees around, but you can plant them if you get desperate for wood. Then these other ones. So at the moment they're at low level desirabilities. So let's just go with this small tree and as I bring it in close to the houses it shows you the change in desirability. The more expensive the decoration usually the more desirability it will give. So you want to place these decorations near to clusters of houses and it's always good to do it somewhere where you're going to get a few houses being affected by the increase in desirability. And I think that's it for the starting tutorial. This will help you hit the ground running. I hope that this has helped. And if there's anything else you'd like me to explain, just chuck it down in the comments and I'll make another video. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. See ya.